one. Okay. Hello everyone, it's great to have you all here tonight for another class. Um, and tonight we're going to be um, speaking about one topic in Parashat uh, Vayala. But before that, we'll just have a quick summary of the Parasha. Uh, it starts with uh, Abraham Avinu. Abraham Avinu that is um, uh, just after his circumcision and God appears to him. Uh, to visit the Chole, uh, the sick, as uh, Rashi explains. It's talking also about uh, uh, Hashem revealing to Abraham that Sodom and Amorah uh, are going to be destroyed, and uh, Abraham advocates on their behalf. Um, there is also um, the idea that Abraham Avinu, in the end of the parasha, is going to have a son, he has a son. Um, and um, after that, it's talking in the end of the parasha, it's talking about the Akedah, the binding of uh, Itzchak. So this is basically a glimpse, a uh, little points about the parasha. Uh, what I would like to cover tonight is uh, the end of the parasha where Abraham Avinu uh, is tested um, with the Akedah Itzchak, the binding of Itzchak. Um, Chachamim teaches in Turkey Avot that Asaran Misionot, there were 10 tests that were administered by God regarding Abraham Avinu. And the last one, the most dramatic, is Akedat Itzchak, the binding of Itzchak. As we know, Abraham for many years didn't have a child. Abraham and Sarah did not have children. And uh, finally, when uh, it, it's announced that they're going to have a child, they have a child, which is, as we know, Itzchak. And after they have Itzchak, the binding of Yitzchak, which is again a challenge, a test, and Abraham, as we know, passes it, goes through it. Now, the question is, it's difficult to understand why we have this unit, why we have challenges, why we have tests. Okay? Why? Because the fact is, God knows already what will be the result of the test, so why does he test us? If he knows what's going to happen, we don't have to go through a test. And Besides that, um, the fact is, um, what do we benefit? What is the benefit that we have when we go, when our Kadosh Baruch Hu challenges us? What do we gain? Do we gain anything from it? When God tests us, when we go through a test. So there are different approaches to it. One is, God tests a man, a person, in order to become aware of his capabilities. Sometimes we are not, we don't know what's our capabilities. How do we get to know ourselves and what we are capable of doing? It is when God is challenging us. God is putting us through a test, and then we know what we are able to do. Now, before the test, obviously, we don't know what's going to be the result of the test, how we're going to be <coughs> reacting. For example, um, if a fire breaks in a, a movie theater, the a crowded place, there's a little, big crowd. At that point, what is going to happen depends on the person. Some people are going to go and save others. They're going to be the heroes of the day. Others will not even think twice and will flee, fled, will go away, will escape the fire. But the fact is, if <laughs> I would ask anyone what will happen if there is going to be, God forbid, a fire, no one will be able to tell me this is what's going to happen, this is what's going to do. Even, and even if someone will answer that, it's not really an answer. Why? Because it's not for sure he's going to do whatever he said he's going to be doing. But it's so obvious. Right. So, you know what do I right. Here. so, so, so that, that is why, that is why God is testing us in order to see what we are capable of doing. Now, after the moment of crisis as well, we are not the same people we were before. We are completely, we completely changed. The, the test that we went through, the challenge that we went through, the crisis, the drama, whatever it is we went through, is going to be certainly something that is going to change our lives forever. Now, that's one thing. The other thing is, the second point is, God tests an individual to proclaim that individual's capabilities to the world. Sometimes the world has to, has to understand that they have someone who is very capable. How are they going to understand that? They are going to understand that 
to the test that, the, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that God, is going to put the person through. And that is why in Hebrew, a test is Nisayon. Nisayon comes from the words, from the Shoresh Nes, which is a banner, like a flag. And therefore, by going through a Nisayon, it's in a sense, waving the flags, saying to the, the entire world, here I am, and this is what I am capable of doing. Now, with that in mind, let us analyze the text of Akedat Yitzchak. We're going to be analyzing the first four words of Akedat Yitzchak, of the binding of Yitzchak, when Abraham Avinu is approached by God, and God is telling him, Go and sacrifice your son. How does it start? It starts in Perek Chavbet, Pasuk Aleph. Vayhi achar ha-devarim ha-elim. And you can look at it, it's analyzing the text. Vayhi achar ha-devarim ha-elim. And it was after these things. Now these words are superfluous. They are not necessary. We don't need them in the text. Why? Why? Because the Torah is following a chronological order. And since the Torah follows a chronological order, there is no point of saying, And it was after, after these things. We know it happened after that. By the way, there are exceptions to this rule. We do say, En mukdam me'ohar Torah. We have this rule that sometimes it's not chronological, but this is, by the way, open to debate. But as a general rule, we have an order. The Torah goes in order, and therefore, these words seem to be superfluous. We don't need them in the text. Now, the rabbis usually draw a connection between what happens before to what is about to happen in the Torah. The paragraph that we read before, and the paragraph that we are about to read. Just before the Akedah, the Torah speaks about a Brit, a covenant that Avraham Avinu does with Avimelech. The question is, what is the connection between, is there a connection be between the covenant and the fact that um, Yitzchak had to go through the Akedah, Avraham Avinu was supposed to go and sacrifice his son. So tonight we'll cover three different approaches and we're going to concentrate mainly on the third approach of the Rashubah, the grandson, grandson of Rashi. So the first approach is Rashi. And what does Rashi say? Rashi says, in the second page you can look at it, I'll read what Rashi says in Hebrew. Ahar hadevarim ha'ele. It says in the Torah, after these things, Ahar de Varav shel Satan shahiyah mekatreg veomer mikol seuda shahasa Avraham lo ekriv lefanecha parehad o ayrecha. Rashi says, after these things, Varim is also words. It was after the words of the Satan. The Satan went to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to God to speak about Avraham Avinu. And what did he say? After the meal that Abraham did in honor of the birth of Yitzchak, his son, he didn't thank you in any way. He didn't bring any sacrifice. He didn't mention your name. It doesn't seem that he's connected with you anymore. After the sacrifice? It was after he, did, he told, the Satan told Abraham, uh, Hashem, Abraham didn't, didn't, didn't do anything about you. For, for, in your honor. What about the Ali? That's, before, that's after. No, no, this is for the birth. This is for the birth. The birth of Yitzchak. Yeah. So Yitzchak is born. Abraham does a big feast. And he doesn't mention Hashem. He doesn't do anything for Hashem. Amar lo kum asa ela bishvil beno ilu ha'iti omer lo zevach oto lefanai lo haya me'akev. God responds to the Satan by telling him, you know what? If I would ask Abraham to sacrifice his son, he would do it. Which, by the way, it's a very nice midrash, but it doesn't really fit into the text. It seems like Rashi 
doesn't have any other way or feels that this is the best way of dealing with the text. How does he deal with it? A midrash. But it really doesn't fit into the text. Now, the second interpretation that Rashi um, quotes is Ve'yeshomri, and some say, some of the Chachamim say, Ahar varav shet Ishmael she'ayam itpa'er al Yitzchak. It was after what Ishmael told Yitzchak. Ishmael was mocking Yitzchak, and how? Shemal ben shelosh esre she'amna ve'lo mi'ha. That he had to go through the Brit Mila, through the, through the circumcision, at the age of 13, and he didn't complain about it. This is what Ishmael was telling Yitzchak. Amar lo Yitzchak. Yitzchak told him, Be'ever echad ata mir'eni. You are talking, you are basing yourself on one limb. Ilu amar li ha-Kadosh Baruch Hu zebah atzmecha lefanai lo ha-Iti me'akif. If ha-Kadosh Baruch Hu would ask me to sacrifice myself, I wouldn't refuse. So this is Rashi's approach. She takes the Midrash, and again, it doesn't really fit into the text. Why? Because we have something before. The text before is talking about Avimelech. How does it fit into what Avimelech, the covenant that he had with Abraham? Doesn't seem to fit. That's number one. Reason number two. Following God's request, first of all, we feel after the days, which we did for Yitzhak. Yes. And calling Yitzhak because God asked him to call him, to lend him Yitzhak. This is another one. I follow him for Yitzhak because God asked him to. That is true, but the fact is, it does not fit into the text what Rashi says. Rashi, with what happened before with the covenant, it seems to be out of context. The second opinion, which is the Ora Haim Kadosh, says the following. He says, in a, in a quote, if you look inside, it's number two, Vayhi Ahara Devarim, Pirusha Devarim Ha'amunim Lema'ala. The Orachim says that when the Torah speaks in this case about the Devarim, the things, it's not talking necessarily about the covenant, but it's talking about what happened before. Me'ayinyan, Shetam Ahar Patkei She'avru Alav, he says that Abraham Adun went through different adventures, Till finally he has a son at an old age. And then Hashem promises him that he's going to have descendants from Yitzchak. And then when Yitzchak was already an adult, as it says in the Pasuk, that Abraham Avinu dwelled many years in Eretz Perishtim, which means that Yitzchak Avinu was a very an old, he was an adult. So we learned that he was an adult at that time. And that's why Abraham Avinu he says, after everything that Yitzchak Avraham Avinu went through, going down to Mitzrayim, being with Sarah, Sarah being taken to, to the palace, and so on and so forth, everything that he went through, what happens? He has Yitzchak, and then the Torah says, After all these adventures that Avraham and Sarah went through, they have a son, and the son is about to be offered sacrifice to Hashem. So therefore, it teaches us that Yitzchak Avinu was again, he emphasizes Gadol Haya, he was an adult, and he didn't stop Abraham Avinu to go through the sacrifice. And therefore, um, after everything that Abraham Avinu went through, he understands that this is the time that the real challenge come, comes into being, which is Akedat Yitzchak, the sacrifice of Yitzchak Avinu. So this is the way the Orachayim understands that. 
So he puts it into, in, into the context in a sense that by here, after these things, he's talking about everything, all the lifetime of Abraham Avinu, but not necessarily after what the covenant that he had with Abimelech. The third approach is the Rashbam. And the Rashbam, we will see, will really connect the episode that happened before Abimelech, the covenant, the Brit with Abimelech, to Abraham Avinu. And how? says the following. He says that the covenant that Abraham Avinu had with Avimelech, which by the way the Midrash is not so happy about this covenant that he had, because of that, as a result of that covenant, what was the covenant? The covenant was, as we see in the Psukim, it says, and I'll, I can read you what the Psukim say, it says the following. Um, yeah. um, Ask, Ask Abraham little help him and right. children and there it is. So, so this with you and here. Vahi Baeta Hi, Vahi Mera Vimelech, Vichol Sans, the Baal Abraham, at that time, Avimelech and Pichol, Sarsevao, his general, went to Abraham and they told him, God is with you in everything that you do. They see that God is really helping, assisting Abraham Avinu. And therefore, Yishav Ali, take an oath, Belokim, an oath with the name of God. Im tishkorli ul nini ul nekhdi kachezed asher asiti imechata asi imadi, he tells them, the same way that I made, I was kind with you, you lived in my place, in my, in my land, and so on and so forth. I want a covenant that you will do the same with me. And with the land that you dwelled in, in which is Eret Perishtim. Vayomer Abraham, Abraham says, Anuchi Yishavi, I'll take an oath. Okay? The oath saying what now? The oath saying that the same way that Abraham Avinu was protected and he got all goods and everything when he was in Eretz Perishtim, he's going to do the same with the children and the descendants of Avimelech. And as well, he's going to, not going to harm in any way the land that he was dwelling in, which is Eretz Perishtim. Okay? And therefore, Abraham says uh, that He's going to take an oath, but it said the oath takes place. The oath is not only for Abraham Avinu, because when Abimelech presents it to Abraham, he says, "Li ulneni ulnechdi." It's not just for me, but it's for my descendants as well. And Abraham accepts that, which means that the covenant that Abraham does with Abimelech is not for, just for himself. He agrees to do it for his descendants as well. So the covenant is just that you treat me right, I'll treat you right? Yeah, right, but the, others, yes, but Abraham Avinu, when he takes his covenant, he agrees that it's not for only all for him. Lineage. Exactly. For all but that's lineage. all there is. Yes. You treat me right, I'll yes. treat yes. you right. Yes, Fine. Now, the Rajban says that because of this covenant, HaKadosh Baruch Hu challenges Abraham, tests him with the Akedah. What's the connection? We'll see. So, the Rajbam says, it's, this is number three, if you would, would like to It's essentially follow. a peace treaty, right? Yes. So, it says the following. Vayhi ahara devarim ha'ele, says the Rajbam. Kol makom shenehemar ahara devarim ha'ele. First, the rule from the Rajbam. Whenever it says, ahara ha devarim ha'ele, after these things, me'ubar el ha'parasha shelemala, it's always connected to what comes before it. So this is what the Rajbam says, and he proves it, by the way. Ahara devarim ha'ele she'arag Avraham ha'melachim amalu ha'kadosh baruchu al tira Avraham min ha'umot. After Avraham Avinu kills all the, uh, the um, kings, when he's going to save Lot, his nephew, ha'kadosh baruchu tells him, al tira Avraham, don't be afraid of Avraham, min ha'umot from any nation. After it says, in another case, when, when Itzhak of Avinu is born, 
It says that Abraham Avinu gets a message that Betuel gave birth to Rivka. Here is another case where it says Ahara Devarim Ha'ele after these things by the case of Gitan Vateresh in Megillat Esther. Gidal HaMelech HaHashverosh Taman Sheratza Laharot Mordechai HaHashverosh raises Haman into a great position and he wants to kill Mordechai and Mordechai is saved because he saved the king. So everything is connected to So whenever we find a point of Rishbam again and it was after these things there's always connection to what happened before. Now, let's see, in, in our case, how is it connected to Abraham, uh, to uh, Abimelech and Abraham doing this covenant between them? This problem is something very important in heaven. Oh. And that's why they're telling you that. It's so, not something simple. Very good. Very good. Also, something bad is gonna, going to, to happen. Oh, also, so that's when he said that you're here. Okay. And also, that's true. Usually, that's true. That's true. Why he is Lashon Tsar is something a tragedy is about to happen. You're right. But what the Rashbam is focusing on says Vayi Ahara Devarim Ha'ere always connects us to the text that comes before. Now, how is it connected the covenant into the binding uh, of its heart? Avkam Ahara Devarim Shekarat Avraham Berit La Avimelech. Even in our case. When Abraham Avinu has a covenant with Avimelech, lo only no unlechdo, to him, to his children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, shall Abraham, of Abraham Avinu, venatan lo sheva kevasot hatzor, and he gave him the seven sheep, vehara apo shall akadosh barfoto. God was upset. God is, God, is, God is angry with Abraham Avinu. Why? Sha'are Eretz Pelishtim nitan le Abraham. Eretz Pelishtim was already promised to Abraham Avinu by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ve'gam bi Yoshua metilim al arech amesh et zirne Pelishtim goral bichlal. Yevul Yisrael v'HaKadosh Baruch Hu l'ativa alem lo t'chayek kol neshama. Even by Yoshua it says that when Yoshua was about to approach Pelishtim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu already told him lo t'chayek kol neshama. You shouldn't live, let anyone live there, which means that it was already promised to Abraham Avinu. And therefore, the Elohim Nisayat Abraham, God after that, since he's upset with Abraham Avinu, what does he do? He challenges Abraham Avinu. Kin terov et si'arot. Rashbam says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was metzair. He wanted Abraham Avinu to suffer a little bit. כדכתיב הניסה דבר אליך תלאה נעשותם את השם מסע ומלווה בחנני מהשם וניסני כלומר, and this is very important, that's why it's underlined נתגאית בבן שנתתי לך הקדוש ברוך הוא is is rebuking Abraham Avinu by telling him you were so proud by the son that I gave you, Yitzhak לכרות ביני ביניכם ועובר ביניהם you are so proud of what I gave you. And therefore you go and you have a covenant. Not just for yourself. For yourself, okay, you can do whatever you want. This is your life. But you promise also a covenant for your children and your grandchildren. Who gave you the right to do so? Who gave you the right to do so? I gave you a life, the life of its Avinu. The one who is going to be continuing is going to be the future. And this is what you do. And therefore, because of that, the Ata, therefore, Lech the Aaleu le Ola, or Ema of Ilat, Keritut Benichacha. I'm asking you, I'm commanding you to go and to sacrifice Abraham Avinu because of what you did. You have no right to go and to take a covenant with Avimelech on behalf of Itcha. On behalf of your descendants, because you did so, you'll have to go through the test. And the test will be that his heart will have to go through the Akedah. And this is the way the Rashbam connects the paragraph before, which is the covenant of Abraham with Avimelech, 
to the fact that Abraham has to go and to be okay, he has to bring into the altar its Chak Avinu Alav Hashalom. This is the connection between the two prayers. Right. Yes. Is it not correct to say that he has to go to suffer and then to test? Because if he knows his test, he can say, okay, I can do it because it's test, I'm going to do it. Eh? Yeah, but the fact is, the test is something, as we said in the beginning, is something that Abraham Avinu will not know what will be the results. As Abraham Avinu is taking its heart, he doesn't think, you know what, it's going to be easy and therefore there's going to be a way out which is going to be a ram that is going to appear and I'm going to take him in, and I'm going to replace the ram uh, instead of its heart. He doesn't know all that, so it's a test for him. As he's going, he's thinking that he's going to really sacrifice um, its heart. And why is he going to sacrifice him? According to the Rajbam, it's because of the conversation that Abraham, that Abraham Baruch Hu had with him, telling him what you did is wrong, and because of that, his heart has to go through the Akedah. Yes? Okay, so if I understand correctly, this test came because Abraham Avinu made a mistake. Yes. But did we say that the Abod didn't make mistakes? They were pretty much perfect in their... In their well, last week we spoke about that. We gave two, two different opinions. One opinion says that definitely they made mistakes, and another opinion says they didn't. So we go with, with, with the opinion that they definitely made mistakes, and through the mistakes that they made, they became the great people eventually. That, that's the point. So they made mistakes, and therefore they had to be punished? Yes. Yes. So they have to go. Sure. Not necessarily punished, but, but they have to. You, you, say, you, you use the word mitzayat. Yes. They have to be yeah. suffering. suffering. Yeah, right. Yes. So the test was to, to, for Abraham you know, to suffer in order for him to to understand what he did wrong. Let me add something. And also, so we will say that in, 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 if we generalize that, we will say that every test comes. We have to face that test with suffering, with with that intention, with that kind of well, mm -hmm. exactly. well, sometimes, sometimes you are yes. under pressure. Yes. There is almost no yes. test without because pressure. If we don't have the humility, the humbleness to approach the test, then we will. Very good. Approach. Very good. Excellent point. So the idea is humility. Abraham Avinu goes into the test, into the, the, the Akedah with humility. Vayashkem Abraham Aboker, he does it with. He gets up early in the morning, he does what he wants to do, whatever is right for him in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And he does it with complete, you know, like submission to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants me to do that, I will do it. No questions asked. Okay? Oh, so, so that's, that's, that's the, the, the point that the Rashbam is trying to, to, to bring. What you said, it makes sense, it fits into what we are saying. Very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On, 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 and then... Um, when the Jewish people uh, exodus from Egypt. What is it? When the Jewish people. When the Jewish people. Exodus from Egypt. Yes. They did one nation that they, they didn't receive them with water and bread. Yes. So God punished them with it. Yes. Now, why Abraham went to the Christian to, to live there? What was the reason? What was the reason? <laughs> the fact is... Starvation. What do you mean starvation? It was no food. He had to go to Egypt for food. He had to go to the Christian for the food. No, but then he was Baruch Hashem. He had everything yeah, he needed. Yeah, but, but they, they don't. And then, so they, he gave them, he, he, he protected them. Yes. Food, water. Everything. 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 Now, and now, uh, as people deal with each other, yes. you don't think this is kind of mutual? Is it, you know, it, uh, That's fine. That's why they have the breed. That's why they have the covenant. So why, why God? Because God tells them, yeah, God, God, God. This is not one this. Why God didn't make that, that area flourish for Abraham so he doesn't have to go to Egypt, to Pristine? That, that was, we, that, so that, if we wouldn't go to, to the Pristine, we'd have everything over there. Yeah, but if, if he wouldn't go through everything that he went through, he wouldn't become the Abraham Avinu. He had to go through all the challenges in order to get to the point of being the Abraham Avinu one that was chosen by Akadosh Baruch Hu to tell him Ki ata yadati, ki ere lo ki mata Now, after the Akadah God, God um, made a vow for his children Yes Grandchildren and great grandchildren Yes After that So it's finished Okay No, no, no by the way No, it's not forever It's not forever 
It's for it is for it. We thought God plans, we told him that Jews were going to go down to Egypt, they were going to slay, and that was going to come up. Okay. And, and Canaan is for them. Fine, but the fact is there's a breed that is Kayam, there's a covenant that is existing that he will never destroy the Jewish people. This is Chayde Kayam, it's not going to happen. With all the different studies that are out there and everything else saying that the Jews they are diminishing and there's so much intermarriage and so on and so forth. The fact is we have a promise from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It can't get better. I, what I understand is it's just for this period, for, for all this family up to his grandchildren, no, it's done. No, it's for everything, for, for, for generations to come. The fact is HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised that we are going to exist forever. That's I mean, it. He, he, he was the king of the Christians. What is it? He was the king of the Christians. Who? Abraham was no, the king of the Yes. So that's it. But the fact is, there is a promise from Akadosh Baruch. The promise is there. Okay. 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 But no. Rod, they, I don't think it's certain that they did the yes, so Because uh, treated, treated between people to be broken and break at any time for all kind of reasons. But I think at that time when they had a treaty, it was respected. And at that time, the Christian, uh, I mean, afterwards, generation after that, they were, they were brutal and cruel and murderers and everything. Fine. How I, I can have this kind of treaty with this kind of nation? Okay, but the, but the fact is they had... This is we will, the fact is we are talking about just to come back to, to, to the context, we are talking that we see that um, the text now makes sense what happened with Abraham Avinu, the Akedah and Avimelech because it was as a result of what he did. He did something that I'm was wrong. I'm still not clear on the mistake. No the mistake, mistake is that he wasn't he, he shouldn't have uh, promised on behalf of his children and peace. grandchildren. What? He should not have promised peace. Yes. The fact is why? Because this land was already promised to Abraham. You, you don't need any video. The you don't need anything. The fact that, it, in other words, the fact that he was not obligated. Yes. The fact that he was not obligated. And I tell you what he You want to do it on your behalf? Fine. But to do it on behalf of your children, your grandchildren, who gave you the right to do so? So making peace is not something he should have done. I mean, he could... He owned the land. The land was promised to him. That's yes. not a problem. Yes. And merely swearing to peace was a problem. Was a problem on behalf of his children. Right. And that was a problem. That's he doesn't own his children. Oh, that's right. I don't get it. That's you right. get it that he doesn't own his children? Excuse me, Moshe. Excuse me just for a moment. Um, what, I, what I don't understand is why, uh, why peace why, you know, promising peace. There's no point of making a peace if you know that the land belongs to you. It doesn't belong to them. That's the end of the story. So therefore, Abraham Avinu couldn't take, didn't have the right, Kadosh Baruch Hu tells them, according to the Rajvah, to do this, to promise peace, or to have this treaty of peace on behalf of his children or uh, grandchildren or descendants to, to come. Abraham now, Isaac, they two different people. It's Abraham, but it's not Isaac. Right. It's nothing to do with it. It has to do with Isaac because he promises on behalf of Isaac that okay, he's so going to come out. Goodbye. It's my, my dad is, you know, the, the, the about to do in Perish. He did it on his behalf. That was, that was an issue. That was an issue. That was an issue. He shouldn't have that. But, and by the way, we will come back to, uh, just coming back to it, I would like to prove this point from another pasuk. Okay? Um, Rashi, before, um, Rashi says the following. It says that Sarah Imen um, sees that Ishmael uh, is not very uh, good influence on her son Isaac. So she tells Abraham, Garish, chase away this maidservant and her son. Why? Because the son, your son Ishmael, will not be part of the inheritance with my son Yitzchak. And therefore, it says in the Torah that what Sarah told uh, Yitzchak, uh, Abraham, it was bad in his eyes about his son. 
Now the Torah doesn't convey to us which son is he talking about. Is he talking about Ishmael? Is he talking about uh, Isaac? Who is he talking about? So Rashi quotes, and this is very important for you to listen. It says, "Al odot beno sheshama sheyatsa letarkut ra'ah." About his son, because he heard that his son, and according to Rashi, the, the way we understand Rashi is talking about Ishmael, that Ishmael yatsa letarbut ra'a. Ishmael went astray. He went out of the good path. Now let me ask you a question. Where was Abraham Avinu till then? Just at that point, where Sarah points it out to Abraham, Abraham realizes that. Where was he before? He was the father of Ishmael. So the Torah is conveying to us a very important message. Maybe and this he is... Want to admit it. He, could, he didn't want to see it. Oh, this is one way of understanding. He didn't want to see it. But there's another way of understanding. And this is... Abraham Avinu, according to this, according to Rashi, was not present. Sarah saw what was going on. Day in and day out. Abraham Avinu is out of the picture till that point. And therefore... Oh, so therefore... <laughs> um, Abraham Avinu realizes that to the point that HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells him whatever Sarah tells you, Shema Bekola, listen to her. Why? Because she's definitely more in tune with her children than you are. Because till that point you were not. And this is exactly what Abraham, what Akadosh Baruch Hu tells him also with his heart. He tells him, who are you to take a covenant on, your, on behalf of his heart? You weren't even in his life. You weren't part of his life till now. And you want to take this responsibility of having a treaty with Avimelech on behalf of your son? Definitely not. That's one point. We see another very important point. And this is the difference, be the difference before and after the Akedah. In the behavior of Abraham Avinu. What is the difference before and after? The fact is, before the Akedah, Abraham Avinu is focusing on what? Av Hamon Goyim. Father of many nations. His tent is open to everyone who comes. The Malachim are coming, the angels are coming into his house. What does he do? Uh, bring the best food, the meat, and the dish, and that, and delicacies, and so on and so forth. It's speaking about the fact that Abraham Avinu, Asahar ben Efashot, he turned a lot of people close to who? Close to God. The idea of Hashem Echad, of God is one, of the oneness of God. It's something that Abraham Avinu understood that he was born to do. But all this was before the Akedah. After the Akedah, next week's parasha, Parashat Hayesara, the main points of the parasha, two main points, and what is it? Burying Sarah and finding a wife for Itchat. Why? Because Abraham Avinu understands through the Akedah that the most important thing is family. Something that he didn't understand before. He was so involved in outreaching and having the, or the Or Sameach at that time or the Chabad of that time of outreaching to the entire world about the oneness of God, about being open, about having 24-7 meals in the house. But he forgot about his family. God told me that instead of wrong, he's going to add the, the, the hay, it will be out of the moon green. Right. This is the sign from God to, to, to go forward with this way. There's no, there's no doubt. But the fact is, mm -hmm. since Abraham Avinu was so involved in that, he forgot that there's something that is even more important than that. No stop sign. What is it? 
No stop sign. No, exactly. You had, to, you had to have the stop sign. You didn't have the stop sign before that. The stop sign was, I have my family. I have to focus on my children. I have Ishmael. Oh, Sarah is telling him. He's going little butra. I went astray. He's out of the path. Why? Because it seems from what Rashi is saying, this is the way I understand Rashi. Why is Asarai is telling him? It's because you were not involved in his life as a father. He needed a father and you were not there for him. And it's not his fault. And therefore, Abraham Avinu realizes that. And that is why, towards the end of his life, he's focusing about the Mishpaha, about the family. That's one lesson. So he's 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 the eye. What is it? He marries Hagar. Because of family. <laughs> yes. So what kind of family is that that he marries? He, no. Why? What was wrong with the Sabbath tells him to do that. No, that's before, but after that. You're talking about after. after that, you're right. Sabbath, you're right. He marries Hagar. You're right. And but with Hagar, they have a lot of children. Yes. They divorce his family for yes. something that you're talking about. Yes. And then, but how come the Torah doesn't talk about that life of, of, of Abraham if it's so important? The concept of family. Mm -hmm. wow. We skip the, the, in the Talmud, right? We go. But Fine. Then, but in the Torah itself, it's say that it's talking about the life that you had with Hagar. It seems like, for me, it seems like they have a very rocky relationship. Sarai and Abraham. They never understood each other. They were in totally different pages. Sarai and Abraham. And so that, was that a test as well for him to have an unhappy marriage? Because when, when Listen, I, 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 I don't believe they didn't have a happy marriage. I think that actually Sarah, yeah, she separated from him. As soon as, as he came down and he told her what he did, she got so upset, she left the Who? Sarah. Hada. Sarah. 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 When he came down from, from, from the Akeda, yes, and he told Sarah what happened, she got so upset that she left. Then wow. she died. She died. She died. She died. Well, there's different Midrashim, there's different opinions of what exactly happened. When did she die? There's different Rashi speaks about one aspect. There's different aspects to it. But the fact is, just coming back to your point, I don't think that they, had a, they didn't have a happy marriage. The fact is, I think Sarah, as we said before, was more in tune about what was going on around her. And this is, in a sense, coming back to what Chachamim say, that a woman has a binaya terah. She has this intuition that we men don't have. This is the fact. The reality is that a woman could have a certain intuition uh, and certain feelings about a person or about the environment that she is in that we men don't have. And Sarah has it. And she wants Abraham Avinu to understand that. And finally he does understand it. Which means that Sarah is doing it for uh, his own good. <coughs> and he realizes it in the end. So then they complete each other in the sense that he is up in heaven. Yes. And he is down in heaven. Yes. Exactly. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Okay? In a sense, a practical example will be, um, for example, Chacham uh, Ovadi Yosef, who just passed away. One of the stories they say about him, he was so involved in learning from young age that when he got married, when he got married, he didn't have any money. He wasn't uh, a known rabbi. So when the Chavutot, the study partners, used to come to him to, to, to study, they, were, they lived in a one bedroom apartment. And they had children, they had babies. His wife, in order not to disturb her husband, she used, she used to nurse the babies under the table. Why? Because they didn't have any other place. This is who, uh, and why? Because he was so involved in his learning, talking about Abraham being, so you see the same thing, the same, one completed the other. The same thing with, with Sarah. But however, Sarah is, is criticizing Abraham by telling him, with all the respect to Abraham, I understand that you are out there and you know that you were created in order to serve uh, the world and to, be, to bring the oneness of God, the awareness of the oneness of God, but you know what? You should have a little bit time for your family. I'm your wife. You have it hot in Ishmael. Look at what, 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 is, what is going on here. Ishmael is out. You want Ishmael as well to be out? 
Either you uh, come back and you uh, get involved a little bit more. Tzipora didn't have that luck. Tzipora uh, uh, didn't have that luck, right. right. So, that, so that is one, one lesson, one important lesson. Yes. I'm wondering about Isaac, if he didn't learn from his father. He, he was blind towards Jacob and he preferred Esau. And Rivka, when, when she, she asked Jacob to, to dress like his, his brother and things like that, then he realized something. Right. So, right. so that's it. It's very similar. Very good. It's Haka is going through the same thing as, as Abraham yeah. Avinu, his father did. Excellent. Excellent. Now the second lesson is um, that we learn from, from the covenant of Abimelech with, with Abraham is in a sense we have covenants in, in, in our lives as well. What are the covenants? Today the fact is we are um, open to TV and to the internet and to the email and to the Facebook and the list goes on. And what we learn from that is what Abraham, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu rebukes Abraham for in 2005. You are responsible to take the covenant on your behalf. But you can't be responsible for your children or your grandchildren. When it comes to everything that we, we, the society is offering us today, we have to know that as parents, right, we can't be responsible for our children, which means that whatever we decide in our lives, the decisions that we make, could have an impact on our children. And therefore, before we do whatever we do, we have to realize that it's not just for us. For us the decision that we're going to make is not necessarily only for us, but there are children who might suffer because of the decision that was made or whatever it is. And this is what we learned from, from Abraham Avinu as well, from the covenant that he made with, uh, with, with, with Abimelech. But I think it's important just to, to, to conclude and to say that um, for me, and the most important point that this, all this discussion is bringing is that we have to have our priorities right. And Abraham Avinu did not have it when it comes coming to parenting. Because children need their, their, their parents at home. And many times they don't they don't have their children, their, their, their parents at home. As Abraham Avinu realizes uh, towards the end uh, of his life. It brings back a, a story that I shared with some of you once. Um, but it brings it back to this it brings up this point. Um, and this is a little uh, YouTube or whatever it was, a clip that was uh, published a few years back. And you see this um, Orthodox Jew who is very involved in his job. Uh, and he's, he's in the stock, stock market. Right? So he's involved in many hours you know, working. So um, he's in his office and there's a, a client stopping there. And he gets a phone call. He picks up the phone and it's his son. And he tells him, Abba, I could I ask you a question? So he tells him, you know, I don't have time now. And later on, he'll ask me the question. Okay, fine. So he ends up the phone. And he continues on, whatever it is. A few hours later, it's his son again who's calling him. Abba, I could I ask you a question? He says, I told you, whenever I'll have time, I'll call you back. Okay. So he had a long day. He's in his car. And as he's driving, speaker phone, it's his son. Abba. But I ask you a question. He says, what do you want? You know what? I just had a long day. I worked 16 hours. I'm, I'm way home. Leave me alone for a few hours. I'll, I'll be home soon. He gets home. The father gets home. And he had really a long day. So he sits down. He puts his legs up. And he's reading the, the newspaper. So the son comes to him. The son, you see, I know, he's like eight, nine years old. He comes to his Abba. And he tells him, Abba, now we have time for me to ask you a question. He says, yeah, what is it that you want to ask me? I mean, I was busy the whole day. I just came home after a long day. Okay, tell me, tell me what's your question? He tells them, how much money do you gain per, per hour? So this, the father looks at him, this is what you wanted to trouble me the whole day. This is the question that you wanted to ask me? This is why you disturbed my day three times and when I was back I was in my car and during the day and everything else. Tells him, okay, I'll give you the answer. But he was upset, yeah, the father. Because his father, he thought, it's not a stupid question. question. He tells him, I gain $200 per hour. So 
So, you, so the, the, the son looks at him and says, Abba, here, I have a kupat I have this box. And in this box, there's $100. Could you give me 30 minutes of your time? It's powerful. And this is unfortunately what's happening. And Abraham Avinu, through this episode, we see that Abraham Avinu, till that point of the Akedah, did not understand that. That he has to prioritize and with all due respect, of course, it's very meaningful and that is what he was created for, to be out there, to outreach and so on and so forth. But unfortunately, Abraham Avinu didn't know where to draw the line. And it's through this uh, test, the tenth test, which was the Akedah, this dramatic experience that he had to go through, this is what made Abraham Avinu realize that I have children and I have to focus on Is this the Rashbam's view or is this generally all the rabbis? This is the Rash, according to the, what we built, the idea that we built according to the Rashbam. Right, I could, because there are other points. There, there are other, other points. points. For sure. Yes. But this I, is, I, I, I have trouble with this. Fine. But the fact is, but according to, to the Rajvan, this is what uh, is built up, the idea that uh, as parents and as adults, we have to know how to prioritize our life. And I thank you very much for coming. Bill, are you still there? Still <laughs> there. You enjoyed it very good. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. Okay, so um, I'll be in touch with you and Rata Shabrina tomorrow. Okay, I'll send you a text if that's okay. Okay, take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay.